Welcome back to the High Yield Video Question Bank series. Before I get into today's video, please remember to click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to my channel. As you've probably heard me say in one of my recent videos, my goal is to get these free videos out there on the internet so that more medical students and graduate health students know that they're here. And the more subscribers that a YouTube channel has, the higher those videos show up in the search results. So as part of my goal, it's very beneficial if you guys can subscribe, make that number go up so that my videos appear higher in the search bar. Thank you. Now let's get into today's question. Here we go. A 31 year old male presents to the emergency department with confusion and agitation. He was brought in by police after being found walking through a park, trying to kick over trash cans. The patient's vital signs reveal a blood pressure of 192 over 104, a heart rate of 114, a respiratory rate of 16, and a temperature of 37.0 degrees Celsius. On physical exam, you note erythema around his nares, diffuse diaphoresis, and bilateral medriasis. The patient has a remote history of substance use, and it is suspected that he is abusing a substance which acts as a centrally acting dopamine blocker. If you were to obtain a urinalysis, which of the following might you expect to find? A. Hyaline casts. B. RBC casts. C. Waxy casts. D. WBC casts. E. Fatty casts. Or F. Granular, also known as muddy brown casts. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this on your own before I start going through the question. All right, here we go. So the correct answer here is B, RBC casts. And if you looked at this question and you're like, what? How does this presentation of, of suspected substance abuse have anything to do with casts? Well, then just stay tuned because we're going to go through the question now. The first part of this question is you need to understand what drug is being abused, okay? So what does the question tell you? The patient comes in confused and agitated and look at his vitals. Clearly, given the fact that he's hypertensive, tachycardic, has a slightly elevated respiratory rate, and his temperature is 37.0, you can safely infer that he's using a psychostimulant. The next question is what psychostimulant is he probably using? And given that they tell you on physical exam there's erythema around his nose, you can probably conclude that he snorted something. Now, given that information, it's very obvious and fair to conclude that he's snorting cocaine, okay? He's suspected of abusing a substance which acts as essentially acting dopamine blocker. That's the exact mechanism of cocaine. So you've been given all this information and now the question is telling you that someone's coming in high on cocaine. What's going on? Well, the pathology in the question, if you put everything together, is that this patient has cocaine-induced hypertensive urgency. And given that that's the presentation, the answer is RBC cast because hypertensive urgency and hypertensive emergency are associated with RBC casts. Now, in addition to just hypertensive urgency or hypertensive emergency, RBC casts can also be found in glomerulonephritis, but obviously that's not this question, but just you know, keep that in the back of your mind. Let's go through the other types of casts and talk about what association they have that you could look out for on test day. So the first one, Highland casts, is really easy. It's actually a nonspecific finding and can even be present in normal concentrated urine. So because of that, it's pretty rarely going to be the answer on USMLE or Comlex because instead, they're not going to give you a normal finding. They're not going to give you a nonspecific finding. They're going to give you some association with a different disease or a different process and make you re you know reason through what cast do you expect to see. For C, waxy casts, waxy casts are associated with end-stage renal disease or ESRD for short. Nothing in this question told you that the patient was at end-stage renal disease. But if instead there was a question where you've got a patient on dialysis or maybe they give you a creatinine or a glomerular filtration rate, you can therefore take it a step further and be like, okay, this patient is showing evidence of end-stage renal disease. Maybe it's waxy casts. For D, WBC casts, that is classically associated with tubulo-interstitial inflammation, pyelonephritis, or transplant rejection. 
In this question, there was no evidence that the patient was suffering or experiencing any one of these three things. But something that I do want to point out that's very high yield that you should keep in the back of your mind for test day is that for tubulo interstitial for tubulo interstitial nephritis or tubulo interstitial inflammation or acute interstitial nephritis, these are all terms that are used interchangeably, that's classically going to be associated with the use of certain medications such as penicillins, cephalosporins, or rifampin. And in those cases, you're going to see eosinophilia, you're going to have a rash, a maculopapular rash, you're going to have arthralgias, and you're going to have itching. Those are just some, not all, but some of the classic symptoms. And there's no evidence of that in this question. But you might imagine a different question where it tells you that the patient is taking a prescription such as penicillin for some random infection, and then all of a sudden they show you eosinophils in the urine and they ask you which of the following casts would you expect to find. You need to, in that instance infer that they're talking about acute interstitial nephritis, which is mechanistically tubulo interstitial inflammation, and then connect that to the WBC casts. So as you guys can see, there's so many different associations and third order questions that they can give you with all of these urine casts. Let's go on. So fatty casts. Fatty casts are associated with nephrotic syndromes, and if they're going to go after this, not always, but most of the time, they're going to give you this buzzword, the Maltese cross. Now, the Maltese cross is basically what the urine looks like when it's put under polarized light. And I think you guys should absolutely commit this picture to memory because if you see this, stop what you're doing, click fatty casts, you're done, that's the answer. But when you put the urine under polarized light, it creates this, this uh, arrangement, if you will, and it is described as a Maltese cross. Lastly, for F, granular, or muddy brown casts, this is associated with acute tubular necrosis. And what's really high yield as a medical student or a graduate health student that you should be able to do is to differentiate ATN, acute tubular necrosis, from any kind of tubulo interstitial inflammation, also known as acute interstitial nephritis. So again, tubulo interstitial inflammation was associated with D, WBC casts but acute tubular necrosis is associated with F, granular casts. And basically the, the major difference here is that tubulo interstitial inflammation, which is seen in acute interstitial nephritis, is a hypersensitivity reaction, usually to some medication. And by contrast, acute tubular necrosis is an ischemic response to some type of ischemia in the tubular system. And because of that, the the acute tubular necrosis is classically associated with your nephrotoxic medications like aminoglycosides. Those aminoglycosides cause ischemia and ultimately necrosis in the tubular system in the kidney, whereas again, the tubulo interstitial inflammation is merely a hypersensitivity reaction with associated symptoms. So be able to differentiate those two things because they're associated with different diagnoses and as you see in this question, they're associated with different urinary casts. But that's it, guys. I wanted to go through a practice question that was a third order question challenging you to connect different types of casts with different types of presentations. I hope that this was helpful to you. Please remember to click the subscribe button and in the link of or in the description of any of my videos, you can click my Patreon link to sign up to support my channel.